Another chilly night on our hands, especially in eastern California with low temperatures on either side of 30 in many locations. Maybe a few low 30s closer to the uh, Missouri River Valley. Mid 30s and low to mid 40s though farther west, the latter more toward the Black Hills. And then our warm up begins tomorrow. Gradually to the east we get in the 60s, but more so out to the west. We also have fire weather concerns to talk about as well. More on that coming up, but until then, first of four starts right now. Live from Killaland Media Group, Killaland News, first at four. Coming up, crews are tearing down a building on Avera's main campus. We'll tell you what's going up in its place. Plus, we take you to a new skate park now open in Duluth. And it could be the state that decides the election, why Pennsylvania is so critical. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. A 41-year-old woman is recovering from a gunshot wound in her arm. According to the Sioux Falls Police Department, police were called around 1 a.m. for a drive-by shooting in central Sioux Falls this morning. Police said a bullet was fired at a home and ended up hitting the woman in the arm. The injury was non-life-threatening. Police aren't sure if the house or woman was a target in the shooting. The uh, Sioux Falls police are asking anyone from the public who might have information about the early Tuesday morning house shooting to contact authorities. We're going to have a closer look at the investigation tonight on Double Land News. Meanwhile, two people were hurt after an incident in central Sioux Falls Sunday night. Police say officers were called to an area of North Prairie Avenue just before 7 o'clock. Authorities say there were four people there and a man pulled out a gun and accidentally shot himself in the leg. He told police he felt threatened and also shot another man in the leg. We were able to talk to both of the people involved and that's kind of where the difference in stories arises. So Police say both men took themselves to different hospitals. Both injuries were described as non-life-threatening. No arrests have been made. A whole Iowa man is behind bars accused of stabbing two people just blocks away from Western Christian High School. 28-year-old Jorge Gomez Badilla was arrested for a long list of charges, including attempted murder, second-degree arson, and first-degree burglary. The Sioux County Sheriff's Office says that deputies were called to the area around 3.30 yesterday afternoon. Authorities found three people involved. Two had suffered stab wounds. Both victims were taken to the Sioux Center Hospital for their injuries. Deputies later reported black smoke coming from a home near the original incident. Crews from Hull and Rock Valley responded to put out the fire. Authorities say that the fire appears to have started in a bedroom and may have been intentionally set. A jury has convicted a former tribal police officer of sexual abuse. Court documents say that last year a young girl reported that 54-year-old Oscar Hudspeth Sr. sexually abused her. The abuse happened at a home in Oglala. Hudspeth was working as a law enforcement officer for the Oglala Sioux Tribe Department of Public Safety at the time. He faces up to life in prison. A sentencing date has not been set. One person was arrested after a drug bust on Lake Traverse Reservation. Sisseton Wapton law enforcement say that it happened in Agency Village Friday night. A home was searched and over 100 pills suspected to be laced with fentanyl, suspected fentanyl powder, a large amount of money, a gun, and some other items were also found. Well, it sure is feeling more like fall today. Yeah, the mornings are crisp and cool, and then the sun comes out and makes yeah. it feel a little bit better. It's kind of nice, Adam. Uh, it's a shame we can't keep this going. It's not to say we have bad weather on the way every day. It's just going to be warmer, like how it was for really a better part of this month and just about all of September, for that matter. But today has been quite nice, though. 52 with a view from Lake Madison as we kick things off over there. Uh, south wind at 6 miles per hour. Again, it has just been a gorgeous day. And that sun uh, just warming things up enough. But if you want to get into the shade, you cool off just as quickly. 55 with a view of Great Bear. It's only a matter of time before we start talking about something else over there, but we have plenty of time for that. 55 with a northeast wind at 5 miles per hour. We're at 53 in Brookings, Watertown 51, 52 for Worthington and Marshall, 55 up in Aberdeen and Mulbridge, but take a look out to the west outside of Custer, 60s, Pine Ridge to Rapid City up to Buffalo, for example, all at 61 apiece. We just don't have anything else going on. High pressure very much in control. It's going to stay that way for a while, and while we we do have a warm up on the way tomorrow. It's not going to be as pronounced East River. 
That's not to say we don't take a step forward. We certainly do. By upward of 10 degrees in a couple of areas, we'll be talking about 60s for highs in southeastern as well as northeastern portions of the region. Even some mid to upper 60s out toward Huron and Miller once to go near and west of the James River Valley. And speaking of west, how about 70s and 80s coming roaring back out in the western half of South Dakota? Some of that warmth continues to migrate eastward as we head later into the week. But then we actually have to dust off the rain gauge. We do have that to talk about. Well, details in your forecast are coming up as we head through the hour. Thank you, Adam. Well, big changes are in the works on Avera's campus along Cliff Avenue. This morning, crews brought in heavy equipment to take down the Plaza 3 building. The 30-year-old structure was most recently used for dialysis and the Avera Transplant Institute. Those offices have been moved to other buildings. Today's demolition will make room for a new six-story women's and children's tower. Avera plans to repurpose or recycle nearly 75% of the old building. The Black Hills Area Habitat for Humanity is getting some help to expand access to affordable homes in Black Hills. The organization has received $30,000 in funding from the Wells Fargo Foundation. Black Hills Area Habitat is one of nearly 180 local Habitat for Humanity affiliates awarded the grant funding. It's going to help the organization complete a four-home development called East Madison Village. Well, after 11 years of planning, a new skate park in Duluth, Minnesota has finally opened. People on skateboards, scooters, and bikes were seen riding around the new park this week. It cost $1.8 million to complete. Look around, you can see the joy on the little guys on their bikes, on their scooters, the skateboarders that are here from Minneapolis that have come up just for the day to go skateboarding. If you can't have a smile on your face today, something's wrong. So it's nice to have like an actually like well-built, good park. Duluth deserves it. <laughs> and the park is part of a larger project that is expected to also include a community center, dog park, soccer field, community garden, and more.